I've been working out for over 10 years and it's taken me that long to finally fix my training and diet and become the fittest and healthiest version of myself. I'm running 5 KPVs and training for marathons, all whilst approaching strength levels I've not seen since I was a powerlifter weighing significantly more than I do now. And despite eating foods I enjoy, I'm the leanest I've ever been. And it wasn't that hard to get here. There were no secret tricks, training hacks, or aggressive and unsustainable diets. But most importantly, I'm not done. In 2024, I'm doubling down on the few simple principles I've spent the last 10 years learning the hard way. And the best bit, they might help you too. So in the last 12 months, I've managed to fix my training and diet, combining the two opposite disciplines of running and powerlifting, whilst also radically changing the food I'm consuming. This new approach hits the nail on the head when it comes to my three guiding principles for how I train and eat, which are enjoyment, sustainability, and health. And I'll come back to them in a minute. But let's rewind the clock back 10 years. I was a teenager still in school, and something strange was happening. I was growing taller, my voice started to drop, and hair was growing out of my Something else also happened. Social media started to blow up, and there was suddenly a wealth of fitness content at everyone's fingertips. I went from a child that just played team sports because it was fun, and ate whatever my mum made for dinner, to someone that actively took themselves to the gym and started drinking protein shakes because a stranger on the internet told me that's how I could look like this. And as I got older, I left school and team sports became harder and less realistic to pursue with all the demands on your time of adult life. So I delved even deeper into the world of online fitness for alternative ways to stay in shape. And what I saw with the rise of social media was effectively the genetic outliers rising to the top of our feeds. People who are stronger than me or look better than I could after years of hard work and a strict diet before they even started working out or taking their... supplements. So did it make sense to try and copy their exact training and diet? when realistically they were advertising an end goal that was always out of reach, and frankly, not always that healthy. Well, after 10 years, a medical degree, and probably a thousand protein shakes, not only did I realize I wasn't the second coming of Ronnie Coleman, I also realized that there was a better way to eat and train. A way that was still enjoyable, but sustainable and healthy. I used to see an end goal as a reason to work out, looking like this person, lifting this way, or running this time, and for a short while that worked. Before this last 12 months, I spent the previous several years pretty much exclusively lifting weights in one form or another. I entered powerlifting competitions, trained hard for them, and set some personal bests, and even won one. But through a nasty combination of shoulder surgery, gyms closing during the pandemic, and then starting full-time work as a doctor in said pandemic, I lost a lot of strength and muscle, having had effectively six months off training. So as gyms reopened, I realized that reaching my former strength involved climbing a large mountain for which I had little motivation or spare time. I was dragging myself to the gym reluctantly because I felt it was something I should do, rather than something I wanted to do. In the long term, it seemed like this goal setting method wasn't a sustainable or realistic way to train, because it always seemed to rely on a constantly upward trajectory of getting better and better. And when life got in the way, it was unsustainable. Last year I moved to New Zealand to work, and turned to running as a way to explore this new country. I fell in love with being outdoors, running trails, and exploring my natural environment. To accommodate the running, I ended up reducing the amount of time I spent in the gym, and stripped back my powerlifting training to the raw basics. And something I didn't expect happened. I felt reinvigorated for my love for lifting weights. Combining the two sports gave me a variety and simplicity my training hadn't had for a long time. No matter the hours I was working, there was always time in the day for a 30 minute run. And now I'd strip my weightlifting right back, I could be in and out of the gym in 45 minutes, rather than the two hours I used to need in the past. To train sustainably well into the future, you need to find a way to enjoy the process of the exercise, which is enjoyable regardless of your ability to crush goals and relentlessly succeed. You should first and foremost find a way to work out that's enjoyable. If you're stuck in a rut, try something new. Run, cycle, row, hike, lift weights, do plyometrics, anything really. Or if you've fallen out of love with your current sport, try stripping it back to basics or combining it with either some weightlifting or aerobic exercise. Regularly doing a mixture of both cardiovascular and resistance training is almost certainly the best way to train for your health and longevity. And if you're struggling for motivation, go with a friend, join a running club, or enter a competition or event. I cemented my status as a full-blown running convert when I entered a relay trail run competition with my wife in New Zealand. I was working out with a community of like-minded people, and I found motivation and enjoyment in my training that I hadn't had since playing team sports back in school. I'm not saying you shouldn't have goals. Goals are great and help focus your training. Hitting a sub 20 minute 5K felt like a real milestone for me and came with a huge sense of achievement. And now looking ahead this year, I'm training for a marathon, but whether or not I manage to hit the time I have in my head on the day, it doesn't matter. I've established running and lifting as a habit and found a way to enjoy the process without having to rely on my ability to always successfully smash a goal to motivate me. So in my first few years of working out and lifting weights, when it came to diet, all the talk online was about protein intake and macros. Gaining muscle was the goal, and you would get that by eating steak and protein shakes. And make sure you take your supplements too, because how can you expect to gain muscle if you don't have enough zinc or magnesium? What even is zinc and magnesium? But I subscribed to this mantra for many years, and it worked. I gained muscle and got stronger. 
but I don't know if that made me fitter or healthier. It took me years of training like this before I kind of grew out the idea that my sole goal in working out and eating should be to get bigger and stronger at the expense of everything else. I started to look for a healthier approach to diet that was more holistic and sustainable for me, not just in my 20s, but in my middle and later years too. I wanted to eat food that I enjoyed, that would support my training, but also my health and longevity. So what have I changed? Well, first off, I no longer think of foods exclusively in terms of macros. I don't really look at the protein or fat content of food, or the calorie count for that matter. I've intentionally tried to eat more whole foods that are full fat or higher in fiber, as well as more plant-based sources of protein, such as nuts, lentils, and beans. I've drastically reduced the amount of ultra-processed foods and red meat that I eat, as there's increasing evidence to show that they can contribute towards development of medical problems like heart disease or cancer. I don't take any vitamin supplements, but instead try to eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, aiming for around 30 plants each week. I speak more about what I eat and why in this video up here. But to sum up this approach, I'm trying to get the most of the macro and micronutrients my body needs through whole foods. These are foods that support my general health and longevity, keep me full for long periods with lots of slow release energy, whilst also fueling my training and recovery. I find the 80-20 rule to be a brilliant way to frame things like your diet. If you can aim to stick to your healthy habits 80% of the time, that's great. You're likely making a positive change that you can commit to for the long term. And you recognize that 20% of the time, you won't be perfect and shouldn't expect to be. So listen, protein is important, carbs are important, even zinc and magnesium are important, apparently. But the fitness industry has grown to put undue influence on certain aspects of nutrition, which really aren't necessary if you eat a varied and balanced diet. If you're lucky like me and live in a wealthy Western country and eat three square meals a day, you are far more likely to be deficient in things like fiber and vitamins than protein. A high protein diet is still easily achievable without the need for three daily servings of meat or protein shakes. I want to prioritize my health, longevity, and enjoyment of food first before optimizing my diet for performance in the gym or on the road. Don't get me wrong, performance is important to me, but unlike Mr. Olympia competitors, day to day I have the luxury of not needing to obsess over my exact intake of each branch chain amino acid. And regarding my physique, this has not been a focus of mine, but I've sort of accidentally become the leanest I've been in years. How has this happened? Well, if you break down the mystique around everything I've said, I've basically spent a year regularly lifting weights, burning fat through lots of zone two running, as well as eating at or just below my maintenance calories. I wasn't lying when I said I don't count calories. I've just eaten a combination of foods where it is quite hard to accidentally overeat, while simultaneously doing increasing amounts of exercise over time. I think a lot of people who are looking to lose excess body fat could benefit from making similar positive changes. There's a reason crash diets have been shown to have very little benefit in the long term, because by their nature, they are unsustainable. Although you may lose some weight initially, they don't ingrain the healthy habits required to keep weight off in the long term. There's nothing special or unique about what I've done, which can't be replicated in a number of different ways. The fundamentals of getting fitter and leaner are still the same. Increase training volume gradually over time and maintain a calorie deficit. However, through my new approach, I've shifted the focus of my training and diet towards sustainability, enjoyment, and health. Training doesn't feel like a chore to squeeze into an already hectic schedule. For me, it's one of the highlights of my day, and that ensures I turn up and get the work done week after week. And with the food I eat, I'm not just fueling my training through my early adulthood. I'm eating foods that support my body and health and are undoubtedly improving my longevity. And with this combination, I think I've found a winning formula to continue making progress and enjoying my journey through the rest of 2024 and well into the future. Can you see yourself making similar changes to your training or diet? Or do you have your own approach that's working for you that you're keen to share? I'm interested either way, so let me know in the comments. And I'll see you again next time.